This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program, my friend. I've been sitting here waiting for you, and today I'm going to be sharing with you another part of my personal testimony about when God led me from the university to Arkansas. I never dreamed I would end up in Arkansas. But after I finished my studies at the university, there was another university awaiting me when God was going to put me under a very strong pastor and God was going to use that man to expose flaws in my life, defects that really needed to be corrected before I could move on with my ministry. You know, sometimes we don't like the fire of God, but the fire of God comes to expose things that need to be changed and to purify us so that we can become a vessel that is ready to be used by the Lord. And even even though those years in Arkansas were very, very difficult, they were very important for my spiritual growth. Likewise, you might find yourself in a Holy Spirit university right now where you're learning some things that are difficult, but my friends, God will work through those times. He will remove the dross from your life that needs to be removed and he'll purify you so you can become a pure vessel for the work of God. Say amen. Oh, those years in Arkansas were just so important for me and that's where I married Denise. But hey, I want you to have our entire series, which is our gift to you. It's a 10-part DVD series called Unlikely, My Personal Testimony. We really put a lot of work into this. And my friends, I want you to have it, not because I want you to hear our story, but because I want you to understand that if you feel unlikely, you're the one that God is looking to use. And if you don't have a copy of this, you can order yours now just by calling or by going online, and it's our gift to you. And you can also order our autobiography, which is called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And my friends, if it looks enormous, you're right, it is. And it's filled with 90 pages of photographs to illustrate every single part of our faith journey, including those early moments when our family uprooted from the United States and relocated into the Soviet Union, which was so turbulent at that time. People who have read this book have contacted me and they have said, wow, it stirred our faith. It made us realize that if God can use you, God can use me too. And that's why I wrote this book. I want you to know that God is looking to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you're the one that I'm wanting to use. And if you feel unlikely, you're the one he's looking for. So you can order this also by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, would you let us know how to pray for you? We believe in prayer. We want to pray for you, and we want to believe that God is going to do something magnificent in your life. And my friends, when we release our faith and get into agreement, it unlooses the power of heaven to move on your behalf. Wow, that is so amazing. You know, if you've ever reached out to our ministry before, you know you don't get away from us without really being prayed for. Our partner care ministry is the place where miracles take place every day. We receive testimony after testimony of people who called in for prayer and God moved in their life. And I believe there's a miracle with your name on it waiting for you right now. Now you can pray by yourself. Of course you can, but there really is power in agreement. And Jesus said, where two or three of you will agree together in prayer, I'll act, I'll move. So call us or send us an email. We'll get into agreement and Jesus will do his part. He'll move on your behalf. But today we're going to continue this part of our testimony. I want you to stay with me all the way to the end and then I'll be back to pray for you. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. This is Fort Smith, Arkansas, a historic city that is built right on the banks of the Arkansas River. 
There was a great fort here which was first established in 1817 as an outpost for the federal government. Just across the river was Indian Territory and in Indian Territory there were a lot of bandits and criminals and outlaws and the government felt they needed a post to control what was taking place in Indian Territory so Fort Smith was established. And today when you come to this historic city you can drive through the Belgrove District and see amazing homes that predate the Civil War. But right now I'm sitting in a courtroom and this is the courtroom where Judge Isaac Parker ruled for 21 years beginning in the 1870s. Because of all the outlaws and the criminals and the gang members which were over in Indian Territory which later became the state of Oklahoma, the federal government felt they needed a heavy hand in Fort Smith to deal with all the criminals and all the outlaws. So Judge Parker was installed and this really was his courtroom. And he ruled here for 21 years. He was a good man, he was a just man, but he became known as the hanging judge because he hung 79 people on the gallows would still stand behind this building. And in the basement of this building was a prison so notorious it was called Hell on the Border. It was filled with outlaws and gang members and criminals that were brought here from Indian Territory who stood trial before Judge Parker. Fort Smith is such an interesting place. In 1980, I came to Fort Smith to see my sister and her husband. He was working here, and together, they were attending the First Baptist Church. So I went to church with them. And as I sat in the pew and listened to the pastor, I was dumbfounded. I had never heard such genius in the pulpit. And not only was he theologically brilliant, he was anointed. I finally had met a man who had spirit and brains. What a combination. And as I sat in my seat and listened to this man speak, I knew this was a man that I needed to serve. I needed to be close to him because he was a combination of brains and spirit. It was everything that I longed for my own life. And I began to pray and ask God, please open a door for me to work with this man. And soon, God began to open doors and I found myself living in Fort Smith. In 1980, God loved me so much that he brought me to Fort Smith, Arkansas to be a part of this church. I needed this church. Actually, I needed the pastor in this church. His name was Dr. Bill Bennett. He was just an amazing man. He read Greek, he was a theologian, he was a scholar, and was a masterful, masterful Bible teacher. I'd been raised in a Baptist church but we didn't believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit in the church that I grew up in. Later on, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then I joined a charismatic church, but there was not a lot of scholarship in our church. I began to study the Greek New Testament and really believed that I was to intellectually pursue the ability to read the New Testament in its original language. I'd had experience with the Spirit in my church. I was educating my mind, but I didn't know how to put the two together. But in this church, was a pastor, Dr. Bill Bennett, who was a combination of brains and spirit. He had been raised in a Pentecostal home, and yet he was a scholar and he read Greek. And I remember the first time I sat in this auditorium and heard him preach, I was mesmerized. Here was intelligence and anointing all combined. And when I heard him, I was so convinced I needed to sit under him that I went home, packed my bags, packed up all my belongings, left the university and moved here even though I had no promise of a job. In fact, he didn't even know I existed. I just knew I wanted to sit under his anointing. So I came to this town and I got a job and I began to volunteer in this church. I did anything and everything. If anything needed to be done, I volunteered to do it. If I was able to carry his books, I wanted to carry his books. I washed his car. I raked the leaves in his yard. I polished his shoes. I did anything I could do to be close to this man. And Dr. Bennett began to recognize the gift of God in me. 
And he would say, you know, Rick, you're very gifted, but you don't have a lot of discipline. You need discipline. And he began to take me under his wing. And I met with Dr. Bennett every morning at 5.30 a.m., five days a week, and he would go over the scriptures with me. We would discuss doctrine. We would talk about personal finances, personal holiness. This great man of God literally poured himself into me. And it was while I was serving here that Denise and I got married. We got married inside this very auditorium. And in our wedding, as part of our wedding ceremony, I got on my hands and my knees and I washed Denise's feet. Have you ever seen that done in a wedding ceremony before? But I knew I was to wash Denise's feet as my commitment to God, to Denise, and to the body of Christ that I was going to serve her for the rest of my life. And together we committed that we would obey God to do anything God asked us to do and to go anywhere where God would ever ask us to go. We were so involved in this church that we even lived in a house that belonged to the church that was just behind the church. It was an old carriage house that predated the Civil War. It had been reconstructed. That was our home. We could get right to the church. I just wanted to be nearby to Dr. Bennett to serve him in any way that I possibly could. And eventually he took us on staff and Denise and I became the pastors of the single adult ministry. That's right. That's how Denise and I began in the ministry. In fact, God so blessed the single adult ministry in this church that it became one of the 10 fastest growing single adult ministries in America back in those days. I even started a special ministry to those that had been divorced and called it Starting Over, a divorce recovery program for the newly single. And thousands of people began to participate in our single adult ministry and the Holy Spirit began moving. People were baptized in the Holy Spirit. God began moving in the church. It was amazing. We filled the Sunday school class. Then we moved into the fellowship hall. We filled it. When we filled it, we finally moved my Sunday school class into the main auditorium of the church and we called it Saturday Night Singles. It was even while we were here that I began my first TV program. It came on every morning at 6.55 a.m., five days a week, and it was called Wide Awake with Rick. How do you like that name? Wide Awake with Rick, every morning at 6.55 a.m. That was my beginning in TV ministry. All of that happened right here in the early years when Denise and I were married. And then something happened. One day, Dr. Bennett looked at me and said, Rick, I think that you have an issue of pride in your life. You're very impressed with what God is doing through you. And he began to scold me for pride. And when he began to scold me for pride, guess what? I got offended. Offense is a bad thing. When you become offended, that becomes a door through which the enemy operates. And when I became offended, it's like someone put on a new set of glasses and I could no longer see the man that I loved. Suddenly, I saw the man that I did not like. I saw everything that was wrong with him. I was looking at him through the eyes of my offense. And while that offense was raging in my heart, I made the decision that I was going to start my own church in this city. After he had poured his life into me, he had discipled me, he had taken a risk. He had taught me how to mix spirit and the anointing all together. And by the way, today, I'm still the result of Dr. Bennett. Dr. Bennett's influence is still very active in my life. But after he had done all of that for me, I turned on him and did the unthinkable. I left him and took some of the people and started my own church. It was a church that God never told me to start. I call it my Ishmael church because it was not a church born by the Spirit of God. This is where the building once stood, where Denise and I started our Ishmael church. This was a former school of cosmetology. The building is gone today, now it's a parking lot, but we rented it because it was abandoned and it was what we could afford to begin our church that I call the Ishmael church. Now, just because it was an Ishmael church doesn't mean that good things didn't happen here. Wonderful things happened here. People were saved. People were filled with the Holy Spirit. We cast out demons in this place. People found a sense of purpose. 
But nonetheless, God never told me to start this church. And you know, when you do something that God doesn't tell you to do, then you have to pay for it by yourself. And therefore, this became a very difficult financial time in our lives. Denise and I were poor. We were broke. If you had seen where we were living, ay, yay, yay. It was an old house. It was so old. It was so decrepit. It really did have 47 broken window panes when we bought it, and they were still broken when we lived there. There was such a lack of heat in that house. Ice covered the floor of our kitchen one year during the winter. God never told us to start this church. We had good friends here, and actually I had a vision. I had a vision for starting churches. I had a vision for ministry, but the vision was misplaced in regard to time. It was for later on. I had jumped the gun. I had gotten ahead of the Lord. In fact, I want to read to you from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Well, I didn't want to wait for it, so I got ahead of the plan. And I got out of the will of God. The idea was right, the vision was right, but the time was wrong. And Denise and I suffered with our young son, Paul, for several years as we tried to make this church work. It didn't matter how much life we poured into it, how much prayer we poured into it, it just didn't work because it was the wrong time, it was the wrong place, and I started the church with a wrong attitude. And finally the Lord spoke to me and said, Rick, I'm not going to bless you here. I did not tell you to do this. You stepped out of my plan for your life. And God required me to take serious inventory. And as part of my inventory and making things right, he required me to go back to Dr. Bennett, the man who had pastored me, the man who had really loved me in the Lord, and repent before him for what I had done. I remember calling him on the phone. Oh, I was so nervous about calling him. And when I heard his voice, I nearly trembled. And I said, Dr. Bennett, I need to meet with you. And finally I did, and I said, Dr. Bennett, I want to ask you to forgive me for what I did to you. After all you did for me, you taught me, you loved me, you trained me, I did wrong to you, and I ask you to please forgive me. And once I asked him for forgiveness, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, now you're going to get back on track again. Sometimes we have to make things right before we can move into the next phase of our life. And once I made that right with Dr. Bennett, suddenly I began to hear the voice of the Lord like it was crystal clear. And I heard the Lord say, it's time for you to leave the state of Arkansas and go back to the state of Oklahoma. And when you get to Oklahoma, I'll give you the next step. So Denise and I had a garage sale. We sold everything we had, including all the gifts we got when we got married. To this day, we only have one gift left from our wedding because we sold everything in our garage sale to get enough money together to rent a U-Haul to move what few belongings we had to the city of Tulsa. And we went to Tulsa, moved in with my parents for a short period of time and began to wait. You know, Fort Smith was such an important time in my life. God put me under Dr. Bennett. I learned so many things that you should do in ministry. I learned about the importance of the Great Commission, taking the gospel into all the world. I learned about mixing brains with the anointing. What a wonderful lesson that I learned. Here in this location, I learned everything that you should not do in ministry. Fort Smith was a big school for me and for Denise, and it really prepared us for the next phase in our life. Just behind me is the bridge that goes from Arkansas over into the state of Oklahoma. Denise and I, we're gonna pack up our belongings and our little boy Paul move across that bridge over into the state of Oklahoma to begin the next phase of our life. We took months to get ready for that transition. Arkansas had been such a great experience. We learned everything we should do in ministry. We learned a lot of things that should never be done in ministry. This was one of the best schools we could have ever had. And do you know later on in life, Dr. Bennett 
became one of my best friends. In fact, I financially supported him to the very end of his life. He even came and preached in my church in Moscow. But for us to pass over this bridge really took courage and faith. Even though we had been living a pretty poor life in Arkansas financially, living in a house that no one should have even lived in, that's how bad it was. It's all that we knew. And for us to break free of that house and to leave our relationships, it was quite a step of faith. A step of faith is always big. It doesn't matter where you are or what kind of step you're taking. It's always a big thing to take a step of faith. And Denise and I didn't know what waited for us on the other side of that bridge. All we knew was the Lord told us to leave Arkansas, to go back to Tulsa and wait for the next word of instruction. I have no doubt that mentally I had been trained and I had been prepared, I had been educated. Dr. Bennett had put so many good things in me and I had learned things that should never be done. A birth, a vision had been birthed in my heart, but now we needed to hear from the Lord about what step we were supposed to take next. And finally the day came, we loaded all of our belongings into a U-Haul, Denise and I got into our car, we pulled that U-Haul and drove across that bridge and the most miraculous thing took place when we crossed that bridge. The border between Oklahoma and Arkansas is right in the middle of the bridge, right in the middle of the Arkansas River. And my friend, I'm telling you, when we passed that border into Oklahoma, it was literally like something broke off of us instantaneously. It was like we stepped out of a black and white world into a full color spectrum. Everything came alive. Suddenly, in one moment, I thought in a new way. I saw in a new way. Faith was birthed in my heart, and not just me, but in Denise as well. The very moment we passed the border, right in the middle of that bridge, it was the point of no return. But by the time we crossed the bridge and landed in the state of Oklahoma and headed to Tulsa, we were full of faith and full of confidence that when we got to Tulsa, in the days to come, God was going to speak clearly to us and give us the next word of instruction for our lives and for our ministry. If you have a heart to be used by God, but feel you are unlikely to be chosen for a special assignment, then this free series is just what you need to help you wake up to the fact that you are exactly the kind of person God is looking for. In this 10-part video series, you'll be able to see and hear the amazing testimonies of Rick and Denise Renner, including how they moved their family to the farthest ends of the earth, how they have seen God make the impossible become possible, and how they have witnessed the living book of Acts right in front of their eyes. This series is available in digital or physical formats, and today it is our free gift to you. We are also offering you the book, Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth, the Renner's personal story that is filled with nearly 100 pages of photos from their life of faith. One thing is sure, after you read this book and discover how unlikely it was for the Renners to do what they have done, you'll realize that nothing is impossible when you trust and believe God. God wants to tap you on the shoulder for a special assignment, and this book will help you step up to accept it. Unlikely is available today for the special price of $25. Don't delay. Contact us to request your free copy of the 10-part video series, Unlikely. And don't forget to order the book, Unlikely, our faith-filled journey to the ends of the earth. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Thank you for being with me today. You know, when Denise and I were living in Arkansas, we were really in the Holy Spirit University. <laughs> the Lord was teaching us what to do. The Lord was teaching us what not to do. God was exposing defects in our life that needed to be removed so that we could become vessels that He could use. That's never a pleasurable experience. But later on, you look back and you say, wow, that was just so good for me. Well, when we were in Arkansas, there were some really rough times. But when I look back on that now, 
I can see that God was working in my life. And my friend, I want to tell you that God is working in your life. He will work through every situation. It doesn't mean he's sent everything or he's organized every situation. But if you have a heart to be changed and a heart to be used, God will put you into a Holy Spirit university to expose what needs to be removed. He'll put in you what you need and he'll prepare you for the next phase of your life. That's what Arkansas was for Rick and Denise Renner. And if we had skipped that very important phase, we would not have been prepared for the next step of our ministry. Every step along the way is so very important. And you can't see the next step until you finish the step that you're in right now. So be sure to stay where God has called you to get everything out of it that you can and then listen for when the Holy Spirit tells you it's time for you to cross the bridge into a new territory. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in our testimony in tomorrow's program. Please don't miss it because tomorrow is going to really encourage your faith. But I want you to have the entire series, which is our gift to you today. It's 10 parts. It's a video series and it's called Unlikely, My Personal Testimony. We have really put a lot of work into this. And my friends, I want you to have it not just to hear our story, which I believe, by the way, is very encouraging, but because I want you to know that if God can do what he's done with us, he can do it with you too. And you can also go online or call us and order our autobiography, which is called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth, which has more than 90 pages of photographs to illustrate every stop of our faith journey along the way, including the early years when Denise and I first moved with our family to the former Soviet Union, and we saw the power of God show up like it showed up in the book of Acts. All of that is in this book along with photographs so you can really see and experience what we saw and what we experienced. But what I want you to really understand is if you feel unlikely, you're the one that God's looking to use. God always shows up in surprising places. And when he showed up with his anointing and his blessing in my life and has done what he's done through our ministry, wow, it was quite a surprise. And my friends, God wants his power, his glory, his grace to show up in your life too. And if you're willing to say, here I am, Lord, I take it, I want it, God will tap you on the shoulder And God will say, you're exactly the one that I'm wanting to use. And God will do through you more than you could have ever dreamed to be imaginable. Say yes and amen. Just throw up your arms and say, here I am, Lord. I'm the unlikely person that you're wanting to use. Please begin working in me right now. And he will. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you've called us that you've anointed us, you've graced us, and we can do anything that you've asked us to do. Help us not to skip any important steps along the way, but to get everything we need to get, to make every correction that we need to make so that we can move on to the next phase with grace and with success. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember that if you need prayer, call us or send us an email. We're waiting to hear from you right now. But hey, we're going to be back tomorrow and we're going to continue the next part of this exciting testimony. I'll see you then. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.